Okay. And then just sequel after sequel after sequel. There was no character development at all. Just that on pure technical levels. There are filmmakers that don't want it just to be an entertainment experience. Hello and welcome to Media Academy Online's Film Dark Podcast. You're Dana and I'm Brandon. That's correct. <laughs> Number 28. 28. It's great. We're now the majority of the way through to 50, so that's a, that's a good thing. We're halfway to... I don't know where I'm going. Halfway uh, to halfway 50. To 50, whatever. <laughs> halfway to hell. 56. <laughs> halfway to YouTube hell. So, we've probably got like no one listening, but anyway, that's fine. That's can, cool, that's cool. Keep, keep going. going. Talk keep... to ourselves. That's all we're here for, <laughs> just to talk to ourselves. The train is already We gone. have these conversations anyway. We might as well record them and then... Maybe one person might one want person. to. If, yeah. if you're that one person, welcome to our little club. Yes. Welcome to our little movie club. Movies. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So today we were scratching our heads a bit, trying to figure out what to talk about, and we came to the conclusion of drum roll, please. 2015's Ex Machina. Woohoo! This is the Blu-ray. Just so you know, just in case in ten years these things don't exist anymore. The Blu-ray and that. What's the other one? Ultraviolet. Ultraviolet, yeah. That thing they tried to spruik for it to pay it five bucks extra on all the what, 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 DVDs. What even was that? It was a. It was their form of a digital version of it. Ah, uh, okay. Where you had to like Subscribe. put in a code, put in the yeah, special code, did it. and then no one did it. <laughs> they just said, "Oh, if we put this, that's a feature, so we can charge more." Yeah, right, right, right. Totally so, worth it. So there you go. If you're listening, if you're not listening to us on YouTube, well then you won't see what we're talking about. But he's holding up the Blu-ray. I'm just holding it up <laughs> for those air. that don't know. Um, well, let's get started, shall we? Yeah. What was your introduction to the film like? Did you see this? How did you see this, or did you hear about it before you saw it, or what? It sort of was under the radar for me when it sort of was released. Mm. So I didn't see it straight away. I was off, you know, whatever I was doing, and. Um, and then I stumbled upon the trailer, and this was after it had come out. Yeah. And I watched this trailer, and you know, first of all, I was thinking, "Oh, look, 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 look at those effects." Something looks good here. But then, as soon as this trailer starts going, and you're getting the feel mm. of you know the, the look tone. and feel, you're understanding the tone. Yeah. You know the the beats of the characters. You're kind of understanding them. Mm. And you're like, "Oh wow, this is actually." You know, it stands out with the trailer. So I thought, "Okay, I better go." So I went and bought the Blu-ray. Yep. The one, the very one that you held up in the air. <laughs> yep. And I gave it a watch, and my lord. On your own. My god, me and my ex-partner saw it together. Ah, right, right, yes, Blu-ray. yes, very good. Very um, good. and uh, Blue. before before I explain my thoughts, I think it's probably better off saying what was your experience. Oh well, I was actually trying to remember what we were talking. Well, while well, you were talking, I was trying to remember what the hell happened. Mm-hmm. 2015 was a very busy year. It was a busy time in my life because I was at school again. Yeah. Or, you know. And, yeah, a lot going on with my partner. Like, we're just, you know, living, living. Movies, seeing a lot of movies. I uh, saw yeah. that many movies that year. I, I can't even, you know, place <laughs> how it all came about. But yeah. when it comes to sci-fi and something that's not mainstreamy sci-fi yeah. like it's mainstream but it's not like Transformers or Star Wars or something it's mm-hmm. you know it's more art house yeah um I was jumping on that pretty pretty fucking quick sorry did, did you see that in the cinemas or did you see that no like, I didn't because I don't think it got a big release over here anyway it would probably anyway. have gone, gone in those the was, small little yeah it was only ones. would have yeah. only been at the um yeah those special art house kind of cinema places yeah. um so yeah I just waited to Blu-ray, I think. I, I might have downloaded it. I think that might have been the way it happened. <laughs> you, you downloaded it using ultraviolet. I did. I did. I think that's how it happened. <laughs> but yeah, it was because I can't remember how I came across it, but it, it's kind of interesting because the people working on the film mm-hmm. and the actors in the film is what really got me excited. Yeah. Because, you know, you got the director, mm-hmm. Alex Garland, who's yeah. done many stuff that I love. He's a writer. He was yeah. initially a novelist. So he yeah. did The Beach. He got famous for doing the, the movie The Beach. Mm-hmm. And then from there he did, I think he wrote 28 Days Later and Sunshine with Danny yeah. Boyle. 
Um, so yeah, he had that Danny Boyle thing going on. This is how I knew about him. And I thought, yeah, this guy's someone to look out for. Um, and then, yeah, basically got in that way. And yeah, it's ended up becoming like probably one of my, fa- my favorite sci-fi films yeah. of recent times. Yep. Sort of like the modern day Blade Runner in a way, like before that new one came out, before 2049 came out, it kind of filled that mm-hmm. slot of, you know, yes. Um, or Ghost in the Shell, even, you know, because it's all about dealing with ghosts and robots and all that sort of thing. So, yeah, yeah, yeah it just, it really gave me what I wanted, you know, and more. Very yeah, good. yeah. I mean, I could bang on <laughs> longer and longer, but I'm trying not yeah. to waffle on too much people. I guess, um, you know, starting off this discussion, I'll discuss, I'll, I'll explain, you know, what, why I really enjoyed this film. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, and what really stood out, uh, First of all, this is a, a fantastic example for script writing. Yeah, right. It is one of those films that you can study. Mm. If you want to learn, you know, story, story arcs, you know, beats, tones, all that kind of, all that stuff that's mm. involved with writing a script. Um, the acts, three acts. Uh, tension. Yeah perfect example of tension yeah and these are all key elements when writing scripts um Mm. so using these elements um to sort of you know to uh, craft a narrative yeah uh, for screen this one pretty much ticks as all ticks all those boxes um to sort of explain those elements yeah and it it's so strong in every one of those categories. Mm-hmm. Um, absolutely. And I guess that's why it was such a big hit. Mm-hmm. And it's sort of... It ain't going anywhere anytime soon. Yeah. It's not going to be a forgotten film. And it's it's interesting because it was a relatively small budget. Yeah, yeah. It's one of those little ones. Mm. Uh, so they didn't have much, too much money to play with. But then you've got passionate people involved. Even the people involved with all the visual effects. Mm. You know, passionate people about that too. And it is... This visual effect, like, is flawless. Yeah. They they knew, they, they did what they knew they were able to do with the technology. Mm. And that's, A, stay away from the face. Yeah. I'm looking at you, Alita. I'm looking at you. Yeah. And... Nice. And they focused on what we've been able to do. And that's, you know, that's uh, hard materials, mm. uh, translucent materials, things mm. like that on the body done so well because it's such an interesting design mm-hmm. um like i'd never really seen anything like that before i mean i've seen so much so much of it but not to that to that you know the way they yeah. presented it yep. you know with the mesh and those translucent areas and just the just how it was all put together and it, it just felt so real yeah. and tangible and you could feel those different materials yeah it wasn't absolutely. didn't feel like just a cgi thing and it's interesting know? because when you think when people try and do robots mm. they'll, they'll try and do them a few ways they'll try and make them completely abstract and different yeah so that it can stand you know as a character in that mm. in, in that sort of context yeah for example like star wars yeah like c-3po or something yeah, yeah. where it's where they're objects that are clearly different from humans oh, r2d2 <laughs> or there's other films you know, such as like <clears throat> AI, where you use just people and just put, and and just use the narrative to sort of suggest the ideas are there. Yeah, you know, well, I guess know. just to interject for a second, I guess AI is kind of the uh, almost the beginnings of what this film sort of carried on with yeah. the, the way they utilize machine and human. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm sure there's more, but that that's really reminds me of that kind even the darkness of it and the tone and the emotion in it is kind of yeah. similar in ways. I'm not going to say they're overly similar just because they're robot, cyborg or whatever films, mm-hmm. but I do get sort of the same sense of coldness and, You're right. it you is know, little hints. Yeah, yeah. Just and kind of like it throws you off because they, they look human or they sound human, but they're not mm-hmm. portrayed as human. So it's, yeah, it's that, it's that whole thing. Yeah. Yeah, the that's you know hundred percent correct. I agree with you in mm. that. Where it is, you know, they're very similar. They've got some common traits, mm. and it is the development of the trend 
mm. in time in terms of like the sci-fi yeah like world. these things have always kind of been there cyborgs terminator you know yeah they've always been even going back you know there's yeah. been heaps of that mm-hmm. but it's kind of like things always bleed yeah. into each other that's right yeah and there's a lot of these sci-fi that are very they're very you know on the surface and there's not too much to them other mm. than just like a good time with guns and explosions and mm. stuff like that uh but this film takes a completely different lean to that. Yeah. Where it is not about all the flashy, fancy things the that go on the screen. The, yeah. It is majority on in one house. Mm. A very just a very cool, well designed <laughs> yeah. house. That, that, that. Immaculate. It looks yeah. fantastic. Yeah, amazing set. But it's all in one house and it's all about the characters. Mm. And there is very little of all those big, huge explosions and fancy things that go yeah. on. Yeah. Which is great. You know, visual effects have been used to just to, to, to fade into the background. Mm. And that's when visual effects do that correctly and well. And we forget about that. It's almost like they fade into the foreground. That's right. To be honest. And it becomes, it just becomes part of the, the template, part mm. of the, the mesh, fabric of the, the film. Fabric. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. And yeah, I love it. That's why I love it. You know, yeah, because they don't need to oversell anything. Mm-hmm. They do, but in very intelligent, yeah, you know, careful ways. It's not like, you know, a leader. Yeah. It's just yeah, and then these fil- films like a leader, you know, and you know the the superhero ones and stuff like that. Mm. You're looking. Well, personally, I'm looking at the visual effects, and that's all I'm looking at. Always, yeah. And when a film makes you forget about the visual effects. You know, like... It's that old saying, really, isn't it? Yeah. Like, yeah, it really is. And the Marvel stuff, you know, like, oh, whatever, that's, that's CGI stuff you're talking about. That's what pulls me out of films now. That's what, yeah, yeah. That's what's pulling me out. Every time there's a big punch-up with Iron Man and Black yeah. Panther or whoever it is, these guys going at it, um, or whoever, it doesn't matter. The new Terminators are like that as well. If you throw two CGI characters together, they're punching each other up, mm-hmm. I'm just going, that looks bad. Yeah. Or that's just CGI. I've seen it all before. Video game shit. Yeah. And it's just... it does. I don't get invested in it one bit, really. No. It's very hard for me to get invested. And that's... That you know... That, that's, the, that's the point. For those people... Starting out in filmmaking or... You know... Being interested in filmmaking. Mm. There's one fact to remember. And I know, being an ex-teacher... Te- mm. I used to teach you know, like, uh, the college, university, uh, you know, whatever, I don't know, what you, everyone's got different term, names yeah, yeah. for it, yeah. but uh, I, I did that for four years, mm. and every time you get a new lot of students coming in, yeah. they look at, they, they do the same thing, <laughs> it's all about, you know, who can make the coolest fight scene, yeah. the coolest, you know, zombie, who can use the best effects from a tutorial online, mm. uh, all these typical kind of elements. Very, yeah, keep going. However, when you actually break down the elements within a story, and for some people it is boring and they don't care about this part. Yes, yes. But it's all about sitting around a campfire telling a story. That's Mm. where it all began donkey's Mm. years ago. And this is the modern interpretation of that, where we can explain a story uh, through a screen, in the modern format we know today. Mm. And everything that's in, in put in, in that frame is there for one purpose, and that is to enhance the story you're telling. And if you can find any category, doesn't matter what category it is, even superhero films, if you can pick that category, but stay true to that one fact, which is telling the best story that you can, uh, as strongly as you can, with the best characters you can, mm and using known storytelling traits that resonate with people, as long as they all work together, you will be able to create a successful film. Not saying you will create a successful film, but this is these elements is what all successful films have. Yeah. Well said. Thank Very you. well said. <laughs> Class dismissed. Boom. All right. right. I'll see you all next week. (laughs) Yeah. I'll do my homework. Um, Yeah, I mean, there's... Every now and then you'll get that sci-fi film that will come out and show you how it's done. Mm -hmm. From Moon 
the Sam Rockwell film. Uh, you get that one. You get the Blade Runner 2049 even. You know, you get District 9. Yeah. You know, just restraint on CGI. Okay. It's, all, it's done in a way where it's not... It's selling the story and the mm-hmm. characters. It's not there to show off. It yeah. is showing off, but it's doing it... It's so hard to sort of explain. It's not overly show showboating. It's kind of mm-hmm. just doing it in service of the story or the characters, first and foremost. And if you can't do that, then it becomes eye candy. And when mm-hmm. it's eye candy, that shit gets very sugary when very quickly. When it's eye candy, it is a roller coaster ride. Yeah, there I said it. It's oh, just... Scorsese, <laughs> to quote the man himself. Which is not a bad <laughs> thing. I've always said this. Yeah, yeah, I know. Those films aren't a bad thing. No. There's a lot of people... And the money shows. There's a lot of people who enjoy that kind of film. I go and see those kinds of films. I do too. Like we all like that. days where we don't have to think about. You know, we can just zone out and enjoy it. Exactly. Like I, I've watched heaps of films like that, and I, I mean, we're film buffs, right? Yeah. We watch. I've watched so much, you know, mm-hmm. and you know, some days I'll like to put on a big CGI fest and just let it go and not yeah. worry about it, you know. Or some days I want to put something on that's going to affect me or something I know it's going to make me think or, you know, tap into more emotional states and sort of make me feel like, you know, or artistically as well and make yeah. me trigger those inspirations and, and all that sort of thing. So that's my, I think that's the main reason yeah. I, I love these kind of films is because I'm a very creative person. <laughs> just like you yeah. and when and when these films show you how you can channel that creativity in such an artistic mm-hmm. um, you know such a beautiful presentation or whatnot, something that just inspires you and makes you excited because it's first and foremost a moving film you know and the, and the special effects are almost secondary yeah um, but yeah I mean it's just yeah I, I, like I'm just trying to think, like, are there any negatives about this film for you? So, uh, personally, there isn't too much, you know, to, to complain about. Mm. However, look, let's try and I'm going to take myself out of my thoughts yeah. and put myself in someone else's position. Yeah, of course. This is not a fast film. This film is a snail. Mm-hmm. It is cruises along, does its own thing. And that's what it's about. It's the tortoise and the hare sort of thing, isn't it? And it's even the... when you've got your climax, there's a little <laughs> bit of climax there, but it's not like, whoa, your hair doesn't, you know, fly back. Not that I have hair, but if yeah. you had hair, your beard it doesn't. Fly back. My beard wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, you know, that's one thing. There's not a heap of explosions. No. Or, or um, shooting scenes. It is, or... it is character driven mm. and it's script driven. And that script is in no rush. It is just going to sit there and it's going to fester and it's going mm. to build and boil and and you're going to have to be willing to pay attention to that because there's so many little cues in there mm. throughout that film that to that sort of hints at what is in the film to come. Yeah. And that's really... It is kind of a strange twist in like a detective film, but you're the detective. Yeah. Because they hint so much in this film to what eventually happens in the film. Yeah. They're there. I, yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't know how to carry on from that because like, <laughs> that's such an, imp- such an interesting aspect of it. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, that slowness, like, if you're a preteen or a young kid or someone that's not, generally that like slow films they're the kind of people yeah the the tension which I completely understand like Mm -hmm. sometimes I don't but most of the time I do now because I've seen too many films so I sort of I'm looking for that you're getting older you're able to yeah more mature yeah Mm, yeah. (laughs) but yeah no like on on less snapchat or whatever and onto now talk tiktok 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 uh yeah (laughs) (laughs) with my where I work I make TV commercials for a living, mm. but for those who don't know, mm. um, other than all my films and stuff that I do, mm. that's how I make my money. I make TV commercials. Anyway. Yeah. So TikTok is the new... So TikTok is the new marketing. Everyone's, I've heard of it and stuff. It, it's effectively like what the Vine... The new Instagram. It's, it's or the new Vine. Like Vine right? What happened to Vine? Vine died. They got rid of Vine. Why? I don't know. And now we're talking about... Anyway, now let's get back about... onto track. Anyway, I'm just saying, TikTok's the new thing. 
So if you're on your TikTok, TikTok, <laughs> if you're on your TikTok on your phone, I'm just going to call it TikTok from now on because yeah, it's yeah, hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. So if you're on your, you, you, you can't focus and you're too busy on your TikTok to actually watch this film, then Fair it's enough. not, it's not for you. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you got like I'm just going to reel off some stuff here from the film, Let's okay? Do it. Because Let's do it. I was looking at it. But yeah, I kind of wanted to mention the actors in it. You know, Alicia Vikander, who mm. plays the character Ava, the, and, and the main the, robot. She, this was pretty early on in her career. Yeah, absolutely. She wasn't... I think this was like her first major film that's yeah. on she her shoulders. She did a couple little ones. Yeah. I remember seeing her in a few little smaller ones. Yeah, yeah. Um, but this was the first time she actually got like a huge starring role. Yeah, yeah. She's Swedish and she was a dancer and all mm. that sort of stuff. So yeah. she's got that gracefulness with the way she moves. And that's and why she got the, the gig, really. Yeah, yeah. Because she's able to use, that, utilize her skills. body and, you know, all of that elements. You know, telling, ex- expanding on the character through not only you know, your voice on mm. the head, mm. but through the body as well. Especially when you're playing a character like an android. Yeah. That's important. And I think I said it came out 2015. I think it's 2014. So, yeah. you know, I, I'm, I, I really want to watch it again. Mm-hmm. Cause I've seen it about three, four times. Yeah, and I, this is yeah. one of those films I really don't want to overwatch. Like, I, I keep spacing it out. Yeah. I don't want to I don't want to kill it. So, I'm, you know, because I, yeah. I love it. You know, I it really is, do. And it is one of those films that as you watch it more, you will start to pick up on more. Mm. And that's when I say it is a film to study. Because when you study it and you start to pick up on all these traits, here I am teaching again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm in professor mode at the moment. That's fine. That's but good. um, if you pick up on all these small little traits that hint show you in script format ways how you can sort of put little little hints or little nods to what's coming in it, and the more you watch it, the more you'll pick up on. Which is what makes films like stand the test of time like a Stanley Kubrick film or something like that where they just when they come out they're almost too much for audiences yeah but it's time that makes these films Absolutely. special yeah because people keep seeing them and re-seeing them and mm-hmm. as they get older and older they start seeing more stuff in them and they go wow well, yeah crazy details you know yeah um, but yeah you got Oscar Isaac you got Dom Old Gleeson um, so that, those two are in the new Star Wars franchises. Unfortunately, the Star Wars franchise did not really take a page out of this movie's book. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, yep. you know, and they went the other route, which is, you know, Star Wars could easily do, like Rogue One, they could easily tackle more mature yeah. themed stories and characters. They've got it all there mm-hmm. to play with and they just keep yeah. refusing. Well, Mandalorian was, was I mean, probably yeah. closer to this than... Yeah, yeah, so Mandalorian and Rogue One, like the, that, you know, where they're kind of doing something else away from all yeah. that other stuff. Yeah. You know, there, there's so much to be explored with these ideas and these things. Like, if you do it well, people will like it, you know. And mm-hmm. unfortunately, I think this film was a success, but it, it's not a massive success. No, you know? because, I mean, it's, it was branded as like an art housey film. And of course. It is, you know, Which it is. With, you know, it is effectively mm. very art housey. Mm. However, you know, I think it's got more appeal. Than what it's been given. When you think of art house here, you think you know this one has a lot though to enjoy for mo- for a lot of a lot of people. Yeah, no, it definitely does. Um, even this the relationship sort of aspect of the you know the characters and them trying to that's what reminds me of like two thousand and one Space Odyssey and stuff like that. Like yeah. that whole idea of. Um, falling in love with an AI or not falling in love but having a, a relationship with an AI yeah. or something like that. That's, that's a very that's a very interesting concept, Blade Runner. Yeah, yeah. Beautifully sort of in the in the latest, you know, iteration of Blade Runner yeah. showed ex, you know, put explore that forward, that pretty, explore that very interestingly. Yeah, yeah. Um and I think it's something we've discussed in the past as well on one of our previous podcasts about that. Yeah. And like even the music in it. I don't know if you remember the electronic sort of mm-hmm. score in the yep. film. Yep. But that is just beautiful music composed by Jeff Barrow and Ben Salisbur- Salisbury. Mm-hmm. Salisbury. <laughs> <laughs> so I've never heard of those two guys before, you know, and I, I feel bad because I probably feel like I should. Um, but they're not massive composers. They're someone sort of relatively yeah. new. So the, the music itself was actually quite refreshing yeah. as well. We're starting to see... 
this sort of approach where they do get sort of people that, that aren't huge big it's names. It's become more of a trend again yeah. now, I think. Where yeah, like Stranger get, Things, same thing happened. Yeah, there. they got those guys. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm trying to think of other ones now yeah. and I don't want to <laughs> but you know you had bigger ones like Junkie XL that mm-hmm. they use for Mad Max and the yeah. Batman v Superman and whatnot. so you know they keep pulling these um, electronic guys and, mm-hmm. and u- utilising their skills you know and it's it's it works really well especially these kind yeah. of films yeah. Um, but yeah like this is one of those films for me that is just so solid it's hard for me to poke holes in it Yeah. but if I was to poke poke a hole in it was that I think my attention did dip at a few points in the film yeah but that's second just act a, was this the second act or I think it was somewhere around there you yeah. know but just uh, after the halfway mark yeah because I wanted things to start ramping yeah. up and to be honest like we were saying it's not a bad thing it's just something Absolutely. you kind of have to get used to because we get mm. we almost get so programmed to that same old formula of things yeah. are going to start ramping up and if they're not, what's yeah. happening? Is this movie boring? What's going yeah. on? Well, if you look at, if you look at, again, we're talking about Marvel here, but look at mm. a Marvel film. They're like 10 pages long yeah. because it's all, it's all just, and then a fight happens. Yeah, it's something like, like that. It's almost like they could temp, almost template those movies. Like yeah. They've already created the template. So we're used to just, you know, having that on in the background. We're just chilling on our phones and doing our thing and we don't have to pay attention to what he said. Jokes here and there. You know, yeah, just, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it is very, it is very, this, the talking is just getting in the way of all mm. the action and that's what it is, right? Mm. When this film, it is very important, yeah. is what they're saying, but it is very, also very easy to switch that off. Yeah. And not listen to what they're saying and just put our heads up every now and then, oh, okay, he's walking mm. now. Oh, okay, they're <laughs> talking and it's almost these films are almost just important. The dialogues, the dialogue, is just as important as the quiet moments. So you're just looking at the face, That's right. yeah. the emotions. You're reading every little detail you can. Yeah. The way the shots are, you know, set up, the way the lighting is used, the way that the the set direction or set, uh, what do you call it? Um, design. Design. Yeah. The, the way they've designed everything. Just everything, every aspect, cinematography, every mm-hmm. aspect about these films, well, this film is used to tell this story. It's yeah. it's all part of one big cohesive chunk. And that is just so solid. And yeah, what else can I say? Like negatives for me, I don't really have any apart from that. I want more of this kind of thing, but yeah. I'm kind of glad... <laughs> we don't get them all the time yeah, because yeah. they're, they're like that kind of thing that comes out and you're just like, wow, that was really good. But yeah. you don't want it to be coming every year. Or well, and, it, and it never will, right? No. Because it's, it's for this one reason. They're easy to appreciate, but hard to do. Yeah. You see so many films that try and be more than they are mm. all the, every year. You see lots of them, but they poof. Yeah. It's because you need the right elements mm. to all fit together the right story with the right tone and the right message to all fit together Mm. and and all work together and this no one ever make no one ever goes out to make a bad film no that is everyone and that's the one thing there's a lot of people a lot of spectators journalists they're they're all spectators (laughs) that effectively they do that they don't do they just watch from afar and so it's hard to appreciate you've got all these people working together and they all want to do one thing mm. and that is to make the best film they can and no one ever sets out to make a bad film however things don't always go to plan mm. and that's when you're working you can say it with anything a business you know anything that work, that deals with a group of people having to work together on a common goal yes you might have the director you might have all these other people but there's give and take on all of those roles and you all have to hopefully end up at the same you know, milestone. However, everyone has their own interpretations of this and those milestones might be in different places for everyone, different mm. person. Mm. And that's why you have films like Cats that didn't have all their 3D done and they were fixing it in post because you, know, you get given these deadlines from the studios because the studio only really want this thing. Mm. 
uh, sorry for those people who don't see, I'm I'm showing like the money sign. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ching ching. Um, <laughs> and and so they get put under the pressure, and the best films aren't always made. Mm-hmm. Here I'm going on a tangent again. Yeah, no, however, winding it back to this one. Yeah. Uh, this was a good example where they were able to all get those you know milestone posts, those end goals, mm. all to align. Yeah. And all work at the right time, at the right you know time in society, uh, because there's a many films that come out that uh, would have done exceedingly well if it was at a different time mm. because the the trends and the culture and what goes on in society are always different mm. and films echo society always mm. so that that's the reason when a bad film when a film does do bad and we've got to have it ourselves of knocking films and just mm. throwing them under the bus and saying they're terrible mm. however when we do that we also want to appreciate the work that's been put in, in it, and are looking at it as not as a reflection on the people who created these films. Because the people who made a bad film also made good films, and it's important to remember that. That's a good one, that's coming me. from someone behind the camera. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's so easy, especially in this day and age, everyone's a critic. Mm-hmm. Everyone wants to voice their opinion and whatnot, and, yeah. you know, have their two cents. Um, so, yeah. Uh, like, this film actually was, you know, it won Best Visual Effects Oscar. It won yeah. that Oscar. And it was nominated for Original Screenplay. Best Original Screenplay. So, it did get the recognition where it needed it. Absolutely. And it propelled Alex Garland to the top, you know, well, mm. to that, to a, a much higher position. You know, he was a director to look out for. Yeah. And then he went and did a deal... He, well, he did his next film, directed his next film. I don't know if you've seen this one, um, Annihilation. No. And that came out on Netflix. It actually got... Okay. It bombed in the States, did terribly in the States right. or Canada, North America. Yeah. And then they got the studio got cold feet and just thought, oh, we'll just sell it to Netflix. We yeah. won't release it in cinemas around the world. Yeah. Okay. I think they did here and there, but it was just... It was mainly a Netflix dump. So they dumped it on there and it got a lot of eyes on it. You know, it was a big thing when it came out on Netflix. And I watched it. And, yeah, you need to see that one. But it's definitely... Okay. I still like it, but it's nowhere near as tight as yeah. Ex Machina. Right. And, it, again, it comes down to amazing people, but sometimes those points don't fall mm. together. Everything's great in it, mm. you know, pretty much. You know, it's still a great film, but... Mm-hmm. That just goes to show you, like, how good Ex Machina is. Yeah. Like, it's got, what, three actors or four actors in it. It's a few more here, bit players, but the major actors in it are probably, what, the three, which is Oscar Isaac, Domhnall Gleeson, and Alicia Vikander. Yeah. You know? So, it's almost like watching a stage play. It's that small, it's intimate. Well, effectively, that's what it is. Really. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You could easily take this script and throw Put it on the stage. On the stage. And it would be that. awesome on a stage, it's too. amazing. Yeah. yeah. You could do, like, all sorts of set stuff mm-hmm. going on with lighting and yeah, you know super, all sorts of cool stuff clever. yeah you could be really yeah. clever with it like they did um, you know not that I know much about the stage these days but they mm. did a musical of Ghost oh right and they did some really cool like effects to make like the, the ghost, the ghost semi transparent and all these kind of things yeah, yeah. Um, which were pretty cool is that the Whoopi Goldberg Patrick Swayze film that's the one <laughs> they turn that into with a the, musical when they're doing the I don't know if you can see that motion when they're doing the clay pot yeah. <laughs> that famous scene I've never seen it I've seen like a bit on TV once mm-hmm. anyway different film um, yeah like what else can you say about this film apart from that it's great go see it if you haven't yeah um, Oscar Isaac as well that actor can mm-hmm. usually can't do no wrong every film he's been in he's always good yeah. I, I love him I think he's a great actor I like seeing his range I'd definitely love to have, to have your thoughts on the film yes have a discussion and if there's any questions you have or anything, we'll be definitely willing to, uh, you know, explore those. Mm. Tell us what you don't like about it. Tell us what you do. Yeah, anyway, uh, we'll finish up there. So thanks for sticking around. Make sure you like, subscribe and ring that bell. Yes. <laughs> ring it. Ring it well. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we'll uh, talk to you later. Bye. Adios. Adios.